All right. I'm back. I hope that you found me and are with me. I had to uh, uh, do something. Technically, this hasn't happened before, but my phone was uh, apparently uh, in the wrong orientation when I started the live. And because it was in the wrong orientation when I started the, the last live, it made me uh, restart. So I apologize profusely for that, but I'm glad to see a few of you are back joining me. Uh, Madeline, age five in Purim, so glad you could join me today. Timothy Haas, glad to see you all there. Uh, I believe you guys are in that, uh, is it the Carrington area? Good to have you folks back. Um, again, my name is Hutch Johnson. I'm Valley News Live Chief Meteorologist. And uh, Chase, great to see you back again. Uh, Braden from Lisbon, thanks for joining uh, from Southeast North Dakota. Oslo, Minnesota, Gavin, is uh, good to have you back as well. Um, Log in, make a comment below with your name, age, and where you're watching from. Owen is in West Fargo. Grandma Sherry, Race Sam in West Fargo, joining us once again. Horace, uh, man, tornadoes are your favorite, Dominic. We're going to talk about those today. I'm really excited about that. Bentley, good to have you here, age seven. And uh, yes, north of Valley City, says the Hosses. So uh, good to have you guys on board again as well. Um, if you so choose, uh, I'd love to have your likes, uh, your comments, and uh, your feedback on these. I try to get back and we'll look through each of them. Uh, you guys have been fantastic at keeping this a two-way street. This class has been a lot of fun for me uh, to teach because it's a two-way street. I'm here in the studio at Valley News Live in Fargo, North Dakota, um, as I continue to get set up. Uh, Calvin in Devil's Lake, great to have you on board, Calvin. Hey, we've had... Uh, some folks from across the country join us before. Uh, in fact, the world, Germany, has been on board before. So uh, if you are from a long distance away from the Fargo, North Dakota area, this isn't Fargo, Georgia. This is Fargo, North Dakota. But if you're a long ways from us, uh, go ahead and uh, make a comment below. We'd love to see uh, how far we're reaching. Trevor, age 12 in Jamestown, good to have you. Thief River Falls is back. Thanks, Gene, for joining us. Will in Fargo as well. Uh, hi, Jax, good to have you here. And uh, wow, so many of you. Kayla, good to have you. Don Fry, Alaska. Woo! All right. Well, we hope you're getting more sunlight in Alaska than you were about a month ago. Yeah, it should be the case. Uh, glad you guys are finding these classes useful. I've had so many great uh, comments from you. It keeps me going. Today's class, though, is going to be very exciting. We're talking tornadoes. Now, when I was a young fellow, about fourth grade, I grew up in Billings, Montana. Do you know where that is? Okay, I was in Billings, Montana, and I was, uh, uh, in, in the summer, a guy who loved to go out and play every day. And again, I was probably about third or fourth grade. We had a tornado warning in my hometown. No parents at home, nobody uh, home yet from work. I went outside, I'm looking up at the clouds, looking for a tornado. Sirens are going off, and I saw a funnel cloud. And from that moment, I was just hooked on weather. I loved reading about it. I loved uh, studying what I could about it. And most of all, I just became more aware of what the weather was doing around me. So uh, I started watching the clouds, looking at them, scratching my head going, how does that form? So throughout our class, we've had an awesome chance to talk a little bit about clouds and how they're formed. We've talked about water and how that is important in making clouds. We've talked about heat and how that moves around in our atmosphere and uh, how uh, it drives wind. Wind is what drives uh, pressure changes, is what drives the wind. We had a class on that last week. Now, I've got good news moving forward from today. The good news is we're going to continue these classes, even though many of you are going back to school using distance learning. We're going to do two classes a week. We're going to see how it goes, okay? Um, during the, uh, the uh, basically, uh, shutdown of our schools for the two- or three-week period, uh, I put together a class a day last week. And we're going to do two this week, Monday and Tuesday. Moving forward next week, they will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those will be our class days, Tuesdays and Thursdays, same time, 2 o'clock. If you, for some reason, can't make it, uh, Karen, thank you for your comment. I really appreciate that. Hi from Alabama. Don joining us again. Good to have you on board. You guys have some wild weather in Alabama today. We're going to get to that in our weather discussion. 
So glad to have you on board, Dan. Uh, Idaho Falls, Josh, thanks for joining us uh, from Idaho. Good to have you on board as well. Now, uh, also, if you happen to be a teacher, if you happen to be, oh, Janet from Arizona. Good. The Desert Southwest. Good to have you on board. And Andrea from Castleton. Great that all of you can join us. If you happen to be a teacher or maybe you're a meteorologist thought, well, let's check out what this weather guy is doing. Yeah, let's uh, let's put that down in the comments down below. Share with me what you do and uh, and how you're using these classes. I love to get your feedback. Now, let's dive into our material today. I got to put my little computer in play mode here. We're going to start with the uh, the page here that tells you that this is the last class this week. I'm a little sad about that, uh, but I got to tell you, uh, we're going to uh, pick this right back up next week on Tuesday, so a week from today. Norma, hi. Amanda, hi. Thanks for your comment. Love the videos. I love making them, and I hope you can tell. I love weather. I love talking about weather. I've been studying it for about 30 years. I started back in Colorado, which is where I went to college, um, doing research meteorology with NOAA. Maybe you've heard of the National Oceanic Ad Atmospheric Administration. Big, long uh, acronym, another government agency, right? And we studied how to use um, uh, uh, instruments to probe the atmosphere remotely. If you've heard of Doppler radar, uh, the group I worked with develops new ways to use radars and other technology to remotely sense our atmosphere. Sometimes we need instruments that can measure the winds remotely, right? I mean, if Hutch asked you to go outside because there's a tornado coming and stand out there with an anemometer, an anemometer is what we use to measure wind speed. There is no anemometer made that's going to withstand winds from tornadoes that can be quite strong. Okay, so we need instruments that can probe from afar safely, that can estimate how fast the winds are inside that. And using a technology we call Doppler, that's a whole nother class day, Doppler radar can help us peer inside of thunderstorms and get an idea of how fast the, the raindrops and cloud particles inside the cloud are moving either away or toward the radar. Okay, so that's how we make measurements from afar a lot safer. And let's talk and dive in. Ooh, there's a big tornado. Guess what? That one was in North Dakota. That was a big one filled with dirt. Oh, what an exciting uh, storm that one must have been uh, from a safe distance. But if you're that farm on the lower left, that would not be good, right? Tornadoes. Let's talk a couple of facts about our area. North Dakota has on average about 32 tornadoes each year. North Dakota is a big state. That means our chances of seeing a tornado are not the best. We're not going to see lots of tornadoes out there, um, but there is a chance that we will see them and they can happen here. In North Dakota, we can have strong tornadoes as well. Some tornadoes and most tornadoes are not strong as we'll talk about later. Minnesota, if you live in Moorhead, if you live in Otter Tail County, if you live in Polk County, the average number of tornadoes per year in Minnesota is 45, 45 tornadoes per year. There's more in Minnesota than North Dakota. If you have an idea as to why you think that might be, share it with me in the comments section, okay? I'll keep my eyes open for your comments as they're coming in. But uh, Minnesota tends to have a few more tornadoes than North Dakota. Okay, Susan asks, what states are Tornado Alley and what is it? Susan, I'm going to get to that in just a second, but it's the Southern Plains and Central Plains, and it reaches all the way up into South Dakota and Southern Minnesota, okay? We do get tornadoes up here, and we can get strong ones, violent ones too, okay? Now, most often, most often, tornadoes happen in the afternoon when the heating is best, from around two o'clock in the afternoon, and then they uh, live their life cycle and usually start waning at around 10 o'clock at night. Now, in our neck of the woods, way up north here, way up north, uh, we end up with, with uh, thunderstorms that most often shut down after sunset. But that's not necessarily the case. We have had overnight tornadoes. I remember some in Natalosh. I remember some up in uh, uh, Roseau County. Overnighters that can be scary when you can't even see them outside. Okay, Most tornadoes are brief and last or are on the ground less than 10 minutes. So most of them are tiny. They affect a very small area on a map. 
Uh, Bernice, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. I got a couple of answers uh, to my question about why Minnesota might have more tornadoes. And I'm going to, whoop, let me try to get back to your question or your answers over here. It's more moisture. Uh, Melody says more moisture in the air because of the lakes. It absolutely has to do with moisture in the air. It's a little more moist and you are closer. You are closer to where those, um, uh, the, the moisture source is. So yeah, it's a little drier, particularly in Western North Dakota. And once we get into Montana, what are the most states that get tornadoes? Uh, well, I got to tell you, uh, down South, they get a lot more than we get up here. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas are the heart of Tornado Alley. Now, tornadoes come from parent thunderstorms. So we'll talk more about that in just a second. Now, we don't usually get tornadoes out of thin air. Now, we have whirlwinds that can happen in thin air called dust devils, but tornadoes come from parent thunderstorms, and most tornadoes, uh, most storms, excuse me, don't even make tornadoes. I spelt tornadoes wrong there. Do you see that? Tornadoes? <laughs> I was in a hurry to make my graphics for today's class. I apologize. So my spelling grade today is going to be uh, taking a hit right there. All right. Got to tell you, hey, Jen, good to have you back. Christy, good to see you. And uh, Jeanette Ramirez, thanks so much for the com comments, all of you. Okay, most thunderstorms that form don't make any tornadoes at all. In fact, thunderstorms are good. They provide us rain. The lightning in those storms produces nitrogen in the rain that fertilizes the ground. Have you ever noticed that thunderstorm rain just greens up the scenery a lot faster than your sprinkler ever could? That's because they are nature's natural fertilizer, okay? So most thunderstorms provide a lot of good. And once in a while, we can get th uh, thunderstorms that produce tornadoes. Let me talk about how. In our atmosphere, we talked about thunderstorms uh, needing rising air, but we look for days when we have something called wind shear. Wind shear is when at one layer of the atmosphere, you see this red wind arrow moving from right to left near the ground? Sometimes we can have winds at the ground that are blowing in one direction, but the wind up above the ground is blowing in a complete other direction. That is called wind shear. Now, when we have wind shear between layers in the atmosphere, that can cause a whole layer of the atmosphere to start spinning. So let's say over Fargo, North Dakota, or Coco, listening from St. Paul, over St. Paul, Minnesota, let's say we have a spinning tube of air caused by this wind shear over St. Paul, over Fargo, or over Arizona, wherever you're watching from. You cannot see this spinning tube of air, but it's there and it's spinning. Now, if thunderstorms form in your area on that day where we have wind shear and we have a spinning tube of air like this, that rising motion of the air can bend that spinning tube up toward the ground in the cloud. And that's how we form rotating updrafts. You see that? So if a rising tube of air, rising air from the ground happens to be in an environment that had wind shear, that, that updraft can be rotating. Now, that's not violent. It's not making a tornado. It's just kind of this gradual, slow spinning motion to the rising column of air. Um, even if you were uh, hang gliding under the cloud, you probably wouldn't even notice uh, that slow spinning motion taking place underneath. Oh, only half of the screen is showing. Let's see if I can do better here. I'm going to make my output screen just a little bigger. I'm sorry. Let's see here. I hope this is better. There. Now we should have more of the screen. More of the screen. I hope that's a better picture for you all. Okay. So if we get a rotating updraft forming in thunderstorms. Those are thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes. So we watch for environments and meteorologists watch for forecasts where we have not only thunderstorms possible and moisture in the air, uh, but that we also have that wind shear in the environment. So here's a thunderstorm forming uh, in our area. And let's see if I can make this work. I'm going to go grab a, uh, a little I don't want to grab a red ball. Let's grab something like a cloud. You guys get to see a little bit about how Hutch makes graphics. 
Oh, I think we're having some screen problems for some of you saying you can't see the screen. Um, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my uh, Facebook feed here and it looks okay to me. Um, only seeing part of what you're trying to show us. Kevin, I appreciate that. Um, on my screen, it seems to be okay. Um, you may need to leave the stream or close the Facebook Live and reopen it and see if that helps because it seems to be okay on my end. Um, and I'm looking at a Facebook feed on, my, on a separate computer here. Okay, Caitlin, hi. Good to have you in class today. Hutch is showing you a little bit about my weather computer. So on this picture of a thunderstorm, I am going to grab, um, let's grab a, well, let's grab this funnel cloud. That sounds fun, huh? Now, if we place a funnel cloud on this, where we have a rotating updraft going into a thunderstorm, uh, we can end up with that rotating updraft causing the development of a lowering of the cloud base called a wall cloud. Sometimes those wall clouds, notice how this thunderstorm has a flat base. Sometimes from a distance, we'll see a wall cloud or a lowering of that base. The wall cloud is not a funnel, but sometimes those wall clouds are rotating. Emily wonders, uh, has a son who wonders what kind of computer program we use for all these fancy pants graphics Hutch uses. And it is a very, very, well, television stations invest a lot of money to have a graphics computer that uh, does these kinds of things. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty special uh, piece of equipment developed specifically for broadcast meteorology. And it brings together a lot of the tools that we need to uh, uh, help forecast and predict the weather. Now, we've got our rotating updraft going into the storm. It can form okay, a, a funnel, and a funnel is a cloud, okay? And it's a cloud that of, of spinning air where the pressure is lower and it's rotating, and because the pressure's lower, it forms a cloud, and we can actually see it, and we can see it spinning. And then sometimes those funnel clouds can make their way all the way down uh, and make contact with the surface. It is not a tornado. It's not a tornado until that rotating column of air makes contact with the ground. Okay? The funnel cloud itself doesn't have to make contact with the ground, but the rotating column of air does. And then we sometimes start seeing flying debris and things getting picked up from the tornado, like we saw in the picture of the tornado, dirt. Sometimes rotating piles of dirt is your first sign that a tornado or a rotating uh, column of air has made contact with the ground. So that's what tornadoes are. Now, tornadoes can make the wind blow really fast. So we can have winds in tornadoes that are between 100 and over 300 miles per hour. So 100 to 300 mile per hour winds from tornadoes can cause a lot of damage. And it's the damage from these tornadoes that uh, we, we are concerned about absolutely. So let me go ahead and pull up my uh, camera. I'm going to flip this camera around so you can see me. Oop, my uh, tape is not working. So we're going to do a little experiment here. And uh, let's see, maybe you can see it better on this camera. Okay, sorry while I'm getting my cameras switched around here. All right, let's see if you can all see me now. All right, we're gonna do a fun experiment. Many of you kids have probably seen your science teachers do this, but let's take what we've learned. Thunderstorms uh, have rapidly rising air, rapidly rising air that's moving up that might be rotating like we call, uh, talked about, happens when we have wind shear. So let's say on this day, the wind blowing towards Hutch on the ground that I'm walking in is blowing into my face this way but the air way up in the sky is blowing from the back of my head that way. That means the tube of air over Fargo today is going to have this roll to it, okay? So if we have a rolling tube of air over Fargo, North Dakota, and a thunderstorm updraft starts forming, it's going to bend that rotating column of air toward the ground. And that's how we get thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes. They can form in other ways, okay? And there are th some storms that uh, are better um, and more capable of making tornadoes. So Hutch has a tornado bottle here, a tornado tube, okay? Many of you have probably seen this. Hutch's tornado tube is so old that it leaks, so it rains, okay? 
let's do this experiment, but let's use what we learned about the air at the ground down here might be blowing right into the camera, right towards you. The air in the sky is blowing right towards Hutch this way. That's going to cause Hutch's tube to start rolling. Okay, So if we have a rolling tube of air over Fargo, okay, or over the desert southwest, or Idaho, or Florida, or Georgia, Don, okay, if an updraft hits that rotating tube of air, it can bend that rotation, however slow it might be, real slow, okay, and it can bend it toward the ground. And it just takes sometimes just a little bit of a rotation for the formation of a rotating column of air inside the bottle. See that? I should have wore a darker shirt. Let's see if I, that helps. Okay. Tornadoes take different shapes and sizes. Okay. This one, kind of a pencil-shaped, rope-shaped tornado, we call it. Okay. Uh, rope-shaped tornadoes, they're pretty... Uh, pretty thin and their rotation can be disrupted pretty easily and they can dissipate fairly quickly. Sometimes we have a bigger spin in the atmosphere. So Hutch is rotating this thing pretty good. Now we got a big deep, notice the different shape? That has more of a tuba shape to it. And look at that one, whoa, okay? That one's pretty big. So we can have tornadoes that have different shapes and sizes. This would be a wedge tornado, if you've heard of those. Huge, where you can almost not tell the difference between the thunderstorm cloud and the tornado cloud on the ground, okay? Oftentimes, it's those, those tornadoes with the wider bases that can have some very damaging winds that are, are most damaging. So you guys have asked a few great questions. Hi, Tiffany, thanks for your comments. Um, we can talk about safety a little bit with regard to our, uh, our, our thunderstorms and tornadoes as well, but I want to make sure that in class time here, that should be wrapping up shortly, uh, we have, have a chance to answer your questions. So I am watching uh, online now, and I would love for you to start posting some questions. I'm glad you're fascinated, Haley. That's awesome. Uh, wonderful. Tornadoes are, can be very powerful, but it can cause a lot of damage. And while you're typing your questions up, Hutch is going to talk a little bit about tornadoes. Air. Air moving. We've talked about wind. Isn't really that damaging to us. <sighs> that doesn't hurt, right? If you've ever walked outside in North Dakota on a day when the wind picks up dirt and blows it in your face, that kind of stings a little bit. Now, the wind speeds required to pick up sand and dirt off the ground and gusted into your face is between 40 and 50 miles per hour. So if you've walked it outside and been smacked in the face by some dirt like that, oftentimes the wind's over 40 miles per hour. That's nothing for a tornado, okay? Tornadoes can make the wind blow 70 or 80 miles per hour, and that's pretty fast, but that's the weakest of tornadoes. 70 or 80 mile per hour winds can be damaging. They can snap trees off, they can damage buildings, and they can throw things through the air, and that is dangerous. Tornadoes become deadly because even this pen, this little Bic pen right here, okay, can be picked up and thrown through the air with the speed of the wind. So if the tornado's winds are 100 miles per hour, then we've got a pen flying through the air at 100 miles per hour. That's going to leave a mark. It's going to hurt, okay? Now, if that pen is moving 300 miles per hour, it's like a bullet. And after tornadoes move through areas, we find pens like this stabbed into walls. We find straw from fields poked into the siding of houses. Everything flying through the air in a tornado becomes like a bullet. Okay, So you need to get out of the path of all of the flying junk in a tornado. So I'm going to use this desktop back here. And here's my tornado. Okay, If we have a tornado on Hutch's desk back here, woo! Wow, look at that thing wobble, okay? And if it's moving across your plane, your city, your area, it's hitting the surface of the ground and causing winds up to 300, maybe even over 300 miles per hour. It's picking up debris and throwing it across the ground and through the air. You don't wanna be hit by debris. So the safest place in a tornado is always, always, always to get as low as you can Look, if you looked behind you and a cow was flying at you at 300 miles per hour, are you going to stand there and let that cow smack you in the head? No, you're going to get down fast. You're going to duck. 
So some of the common sense science has taught us with research from damage after tornadoes is that if you can get in a basement, you're going to be safer from a tornado. A basement, a basement is below ground level. So all the flying debris that that tornado picked up is flying at ground level and you're below it. That makes you as safe as you can be from a tornado. Now you still want to get in a room that is uh, sheltered, maybe under a stairwell, maybe under a door frame, something to offer you protection should something collapse in your house. Okay. So at Hutch's house, I have a basement. We go there in my basement. I have a crawl space under the stairs. So I go under there. That stairwell offers me protection. Should something like a tree fall on my house and the floor collapse, it gives me some more protection even. That's what you need to find. Now, if your home doesn't have a basement, the next best thing is to get as low as you can. You don't want to be on the third floor of your house. You don't want to be on the roof of your house. Okay, So being safe is really important. But getting low is number one rule. And then... Because there's junk flying through the air like pens like this, you want to put as many walls between you and that tornado as you can. So say this with me, kids. Walls, walls, walls. Think about that in your house and talk with your family about how you can put as many walls between you and the storm and where that room is that puts the most walls between you and the storm and doesn't have any windows to the outside because you don't want this pen flying through a window in the living room and hitting you. But many of our houses have hallways. My hallways don't have windows in them. So hallways safer than your living room. In your hallway, you might have a closet and that closet probably has no windows. That's an interior room. And that's what Hutch means when we say, get to an interior room on the lowest floor. Think of those things about safety. Let me look at some of your questions. I'm sure you've got some good ones. What if you get trapped inside the house? That happens. Sometimes there's debris. Oftentimes neighbors help neighbors to get out. Um, somebody is recommending a bicycle helmet for extra protection. And listen to me, if you take an area and your family agrees, this is the area in my house where we can go to be safe. Then in that area, you put batteries, you put a radio, you put a flashlight and maybe even bicycle helmets. Why would you put bicycle helmets there? Because in a tornado warning, you can put things on to protect your head from flying debris. So. Don't waste time in a tornado warning running out to the garage to find a bicycle helmet. Don't waste time doing that. But if it's there, it's, it's not a bad idea. Um, what is my position on weather manipulation in North Dakota? Now, it happens, and that's not the topic of today's thing, uh, but uh, that's a very good question. Weather modification takes place here in North Dakota. Pilots fly clouds and thunderstorms and seed them so that they produce rain and hopefully not huge hail. And that is what goes on. Um, research shows that it actually does help, um, but it, it is hard. It's hard to pick out exactly which thunderstorm is going to make the big hail and whatnot. You guys have great questions. I know. Let me see if I can scroll through and find him. Uh, can wind affect the shape of a tornado? Absolutely. Okay. Um, if Hutch makes a, a, just a little bit of a spin of motion in this guy and we get a little thinny skin, skinny rope tornado right here, there it is, those can wobble. And the see how it wobbles there? Look at it. It's, it's just meandering, making it very hard to predict the path and where it's going to go. So, um, yes, the wind coming into that tornado is critical and it is important. When it gets more organized and we get more of a vortex like this, then they're, they can be more long-lived and oftentimes more dangerous, okay? Um, ditches or culverts, safe if no shelter. Good. Tornadoes don't always strike when we're at home, right? Sometimes we're camping. Who here likes to go camping? I mean, it's North Dakota. It's Minnesota. We love to go camping. We go spend time at the lake. I'm going to make a recommendation to you. You might be driving across the country, okay? If you're driving across the country and you want to know, you need to take care of yourself and know where you can go, where there is a shelter. So if you're camping at the lakes, look around your camp area and find out where you can go to seek shelter from a storm. It needs to be a sturdy building, okay? A porta potty is not a sturdy building. Do not seek shelter in there. Ew, okay? No, no porta potties, all right? 
but you can look around the campground. Maybe there's a brick shower house. You got to know where you can go if a tornado warning is issued. So the more planning and thinking you do ahead of time, the more you can protect yourself. Now, if you happen to be driving over the hills and through the woods to grandmother's house, you go and you see a tornado out the window of your car. I have had this happen to me. Driving through North Dakota, I saw a EF4 tornado form over Medina, North Dakota. You know where that is? I was driving right by that day. It formed that quick and it was huge. It was north of the interstate and it was moving away. So I didn't drive in the ditch and I didn't go jump down there and get out of the car and do that. But yes, ditches and culverts can be a way to protect you because you're getting as low as you can in a ditch. Remember, a ditch is a low spot next to roads. So you can get in a ditch and lie down as flat as you can to stay out of the way of all the flying debris. It's not a guarantee that you'll survive. It's not a guarantee that something won't land on you, but it certainly gives you more protection than being in a car where you're surrounded by gas, glass, excuse me, and tree limbs and other cars can come smashing into you. Now, some research has shown that it's safer to drive your car into the ditch and then get low inside your car. Okay, um, I think it depends on the situation. What's safe? How deep is a ditch? How close is a tornado? How big is the tornado? Okay, uh, those are questions that a storm chaser or a meteorologist might have answers to and know a little bit more about. So the more you can learn about how to go, how to stay safe, and planning ahead for your vacations. Maha and Max joining from, looks like Germany. Wow, good to have you. So uh, that one went by real fast, but it's fantastic to have you. What makes tornadoes? Melanie, I think we covered that today. How strong can tornadoes get? This is awesome. It's a great question. This one comes from Asher. Asher, tornadoes can get very strong and they can make the wind blow over 300 miles per hour. When I was going uh, to college for meteorology, we didn't have Doppler measurements of the wind speeds tornadoes could make that were accurate. So we theorized and theory said, calculations, carry the one, do the math. The math told us that the fastest wind should be 300 miles per hour at the surface. Well, now that we have remote instruments, we have witnessed storms that have produced 318 mile per hour winds in Oklahoma. So they can be very strong. If the winds get that strong in tornadoes, they are so destructive that even well-built structures can be blown off their foundations. So having a plan is important. The good news, the good news is most tornadoes here in North Dakota are very weak. In fact, across the country, most tornadoes that happen, 80% or more, are weaker tornadoes. Ones that make the winds blow, say, under 120 to 130 miles per hour. Now, I call those weak. That's a bad day if the wind's blowing that fast and it can cause trees to fall and we do have some loss of life from weaker tornadoes like that. But the vast majority of people that lose their lives in tornadoes come from EF3s, EF4s and EF5s. And those, they're, they're, there's a lot fewer of those. Only about 20% of tornadoes hit that category. What is the safest place to be at right now? Right now, inside, and uh, away from uh, uh, other people while we're self-isolating. <laughs> um, we were in an EF1 tornado, April says, and it caused lots of damage, even that small. I want to give you guys uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, of meat to chew on here as we close out our week of, of instruction today. Um, the more you can learn about tornadoes, if you're scared of tornadoes, thunderstorms, and lightning, the more you learn then the better prepared you're going to be when they strike. It's really important, really important when storms come by. Don't matter if you're home, if you're driving, if you're camping, to stay informed. When the sky gets dark and thunderstorms are approaching, Hutch reaches for his Valley News Live weather app and I look at the radar and I make sure there's no warnings. If I'm boating, I'm watching my radar all day you got to pay attention to your surroundings. Give yourself time to respond if the weather gets bad and know how you can find out if the weather is bad. What if you're camping and you're in your camper at night and storms are approaching? 
I want the Valley News Live weather app, and I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to turn that on, and I'm going to make sure that there's no warnings, first of all, and I'll look at the radar to track the storm right there from the comfort of my own camper, okay? You guys, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. Uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys. If you have suggestions for our classes coming up next week, that would be wonderful. We'll have two more, Tuesday and Thursday next week, and we'll keep it going. We might add a bonus class here or there. It just depends. Uh, we're all flying by the seat of our pants in today's uh, day and time. So um, fantastic questions. I really appreciate all of you. The strongest wind in a tornado was 318 miles per hour. James, you are exactly right. You know where that tornado was? All right. Yeah, it was in Oklahoma. All right. Oh, Michelle says they found sticks uh, stuck almost a foot in the ground one time after tornadoes. Okay. Um, I just watched a really cool program. I'm going way long here, but I just watched a really cool program on, uh, I think it was a uh, learning science -y channel because Hutch watches those things about raining frogs and raining fish, and how can this happen? How do you think that can happen? If we get a tornado that forms over water or over a marshy area, a lake, okay, that's rising motion. If fish happen to be swimming near the top of the lake, they can get sucked up. If it moves over a swampy area and there's lots of frogs there, guess what? Them frogs and them tadpoles and them fishes are getting sucked up into the sky. Now, if they're light enough, if they're small enough fish, and they're not whoppers like a big old uh, muskie or something like that, okay, they can go up into the cloud, and that cloud can carry them for tens, 20 miles, more, hundreds of miles, and then they rain out in the storm, okay? So these things happen sometimes in different parts of the world. Our weather is fascinating. Yes, if you can't tell, Hutch likes it, and I like talking to you about it, and I got to cut it short. We've got weather coming. Let me see. We didn't do any weather discussion today. So let's do this. Fargo, North Dakota, we've had a couple of beautiful days of weather. Take a look at this. 48 degrees right now. Jamestown, 53, 48 in Thief River Falls. We are celebrating here in North Dakota because we're finally above freezing, but we're melting a lot of snow. Now, look at what's going on. The Pacific Northwest, snow, stormy weather coming. Stormy weather for you folks in the Atlanta area who... I think I saw somebody from Georgia. Look at this. We got strong thunderstorms out there. You guys got storms. We have, wow. Well, we have um, some rain moving into Williston. Our weather is getting ready to change, but let's go back to uh, Georgia. Look at this. Today, you guys have had, in Georgia, tornado warnings, thunderstorm warnings from Albany, Albany to Macon, Right in through there, y'all have had some tornadoes, okay? It's summer severe weather season down there in the south. I, caught, I guess I should call it spring severe weather season. It's wild weather down there. Look at all those thunderstorm warnings that they have, okay? Most thunderstorms, as we talked about, are not even severe. Look at all these thunderstorms up here. They're not even severe. But we have a few severe ones down south, central and southern Georgia, Panhandle of Florida, Panama City earlier today, this was two hours ago, and now those storms are weakening a little bit as they move toward the coast, and that's a good thing. So, wild weather for us is expected, and we have some changes coming. Sprinkles showing up on the radar, but no thunderstorms here to be worried about, folks, in North Dakota and Minnesota. We actually have a big-time storm coming towards us on Wednesday and into Thursday. Okay? And Hutch wants you to pay attention to the weather here that we have because it's going to get right back to smacked with winter. And some of us in our viewing area are going to have some shoveling trouble. You're going to be shoveling six or more inches of snow. And some of us are going to get rain. And this could impact our flooding concerns a little bit. The good news is our rivers here in Fargo, we're expecting it to crest at 30 feet. And what that means, it's major flood stage, but we have room for a little bit more water and that's good because uh, we're going to get some. So we'll keep you updated with that. There's going to be some possible flooding. 
in the town of Fargo, I think we're okay. In the town of Grand Forks, I think we're okay. Some of our rural neighbors between here and there though, you're gonna have water coming up over highways. In fact, we already do. And some roads that uh, frequently flood when we have our spring melt are going to flood and it's going to be a long month for you folks. Um, the good news is, is this is not looking like uh, it was earlier in the winter where we were saying it looks like a top five flood. I don't think that's gonna be the case for Fargo. So. Hutch will keep you informed on that. You guys, we just briefly touched tornadoes. There's so much to talk about uh, with regards to tornadoes. Courtney, hi, thanks for joining. Troy, thanks for joining. Um, I gotta tell you, we're having a good time talking about this. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your likes on Hutch's page. Up at the top of this uh, uh, live video, I left a link. I'd love for you to follow and like my Facebook page. I'll keep you up to date with all the weather goings on here. Mark Andreas Ulrich from Germany. Yay! That's uh, Kessel, Germany. Wonderful. I know that Germany doesn't have as much severe weather as we do stateside, but it can happen. So good to have you on board. You guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we may do another surprise class, but next Tuesday and next Thursday is our next scheduled class. Good luck going back to school, school kids. Uh, congratulations on the fact that you get to try to get back to some remote learning. I think that's important, right? Even though it's uh, all those subjects that we talk about and uh, I love studying science. Science is important. I hope you've learned some things with science that can be fun. Have a great day. I got to get busy. I got my uh, show to do here shortly. Plus, I got to play a little bit more with my tornado tube. Ooh, look at it spin. That's awesome. All right, you guys. Thanks so much. Woo. Thanks to all of you for logging in and signing in today. We'll see you next week for sure. Remember, Tuesday and we'll let you know.